if you had to ask what would be like the scariest thing you could think of for the Halloween season, there's a lot of things that would come to mind. Ghosts, spiders, monsters, witches, whatnot. But to me, I would have to say it would have to be the American educational system. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome to 2022's, albeit very late, Halloween LP of Ghoul School. A game that we actually took a look at a couple years back for one of the Huntober videos, and a game that I recently beat about a year ago on the stream channel. I wanted to do this game because, honestly, after my initial playthrough of it, it was actually a really fun, and albeit this is a pretty obscure game, that I feel like uh, deserves to get a lot more recognition than it originally got. So, let's jump into our adventure. And let's start our journey through the school. Now, Ghoul School is a Metroidvania. You would think that it would be like a, a side scroll beat em up or, I don't know, like a point and click adventure, but no, actually, it is a straight up Metroidvania game. The entire school is a maze in of itself that is actually pretty complex in the locations you need to go to. One of my biggest gripes with this game is that it doesn't have a map system, so you kind of had to like draw a map of yourself uh, to do that stuff but that was like one of the big things about it, the NES games back in the day because it not a whole lot had map systems back then and while the game can be somewhat hard at times it, it's an adaptive difficulty that you'll learn to deal with as time goes on now with that being said of course I do actually have a map set in front of me so that I know exactly where to go that I have made myself over my uh, Rewatching of the stream VOD. I need to watch out for these bats. Alright. The bats are kind of annoying to deal with. Honestly, the best way to deal with them is to just like jump up the stairs so you don't have to worry about them constantly harassing you. Come on. Yeah, I'm on Hopper. There we go. Alright, so, as we make our way through the school with a, albeit very funky beat to it, I do have to talk about the history with this game and, like, the backstory to it because... It's actually, like, one of the more out-there stories uh, for an NES title. And I think the only proper way to go over the story of this game is in my own very special storyteller voice, so... <clears throat> While taking the usual shortcut home through the cemetery from Cool School High, Senior Spike O'Hara found a strange glowing skull. He put it in his backpack to show his anatomy teacher the next day, which happened to be Halloween Eve. When Dr. Femur wanted to keep the skull for a special study, Spike was concerned it appeared that the skull was bigger than it was the day before. Little did anyone know that the skull had begun transmitting its message to the realm of the dead. The ghouls began their assault. Ghosts and demons have taken over Cool School High. They've turned the teachers and the football team into demons. And to make matters worse, they've kidnapped Samantha Pom Pom, the head cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I can't do that voice forever because it kills my throat. But yeah, uh, the uh, skull was basically just like a gateway to the underworld that turned all the students and teachers in this game into monsters, so every monster that we fight in this is actually a student and or teacher that has been fully transformed. This one's a bit of a pain to deal with because you gotta be in like the, the sweet spot. If he bumps into you once, then he sends you back to the other screen and then you have to do this little song and dance all over again with him back at full health. Thankfully, it only takes like four hits from your baseball bat to take one of these guys out, so not too much of a trouble, except when he's just in a location where it's really hard for you to hit him and he's hopping all over the place. There we go. Alright, Hopper. Come on. As you can see, these guys love to bounce back and forth, but thankfully, they're not really the most annoying enemies in the entire game to deal with. 
That jurisdiction definitely goes to the bats with, with how they constantly hound you, and to the degree you kind of have to like play a baiting game with them. Allowing them to uh, go away for quite a bit, then just outrun them to the staircase and get up there before they can catch up to you. There we go. Alright. And we're gonna avoid the zombie jocks, grab ourselves a wet towel, and start whipping them. Of course, this guy loves to just ram right into you. I'm just gonna play it safe. Go through here, avoid the bouncing balls. And apparently our team is doing terrible against the monsters because they are just scoring like crazy. Damn it. Alright, uh, one more hit and I'm done for. Alright, there we go. Just want to get the time of the ball bounces. The balls are kind of hard to see because they sort of blend in with the background a little too well in my opinion. But once you get the like the bounce judgment down, uh, you can just up and die. Right, so let's try this again. Just keep going. Now, the gym towel that we ha got here, which is our new weapon, it's a lot better than the baseball bat. It does significantly more damage, which I think it takes the eyeball creatures out in like one to two hits. It also has slightly better range than the baseball bat that we started off with, so that's always good. Because you know me, uh, more range is always better in my opinion, but not always in the case. Just because we don't have the use of the baseball bat against monsters anymore doesn't mean the baseball bat's completely useless throughout our adventure. It does have one very important use later in the game, but as for now, we're just gonna just hope we can get through here without too many hits. As we see, we got this boy down here who's just lifting weights and working out, trying to just like get swole and such. So, like the jock that we are, we're gonna go whip him with a wet, uh, rolled up towel, and I gotta say, that's probably like the most painful thing ever. I would much rather take a beating from a baseball bat than a wet towel like that, because, man, those things sting like hell. Uh oh. Get him! Get him! There we go. And for our troubles getting through the weight room, we get ourselves... The Spring Steppy Shoes from Banjo-Tooie. Or, I guess in this case, it would be more the spring steppy shoes from this game. Okay, super safe. These things allow us to jump much higher than we originally did. They also give us a slight height advantage, which is actually really good for some of the fights coming up. Okay, good, got him. Alright, time to run. Uh, right, I forgot about this guy. I think that we need to stick to our sneakers to outrun him. Nope, just need to outpace them. Alright, uh, here we have a decaying corpse down below us. Yeah, this is like the, one of the most morbid things you'll find in this game, is just uh, seeing the body of one of the students just laying underneath that bleacher right there. And for like NES graphics, it's really graphic. Give me my spring shoes back. For the bats to go away. Actually, no, I need... I don't want the height advantage. What we want to do is get up there so we can grab the... Uh, I think it's a super soaker? Hmm. Maybe I did need a spring shoes for it. Hold on. Uh, nope. Oh, there we go. I forgot it's not uh, a ceiling up there with the uh, menu bar. But for our efforts, we got the Dewey-Tron, which is a much better weapon in my opinion because it is straight up a ranged weapon that we can just hit enemies from a distance. Go away! So now we can basically attack any of the monsters without them uh, get within range of us to do any significant damage to us. So I'm going to put my sneakers back on real quick. Head on up through here. And I don't think we can out jump the... Yeah, I think we need to like get the timing down for this. Or not. Okay, maybe I do need the sneakers. Yep, there we go. 
just gonna damage boost right through these guys. A lot easier to do that, especially since I got a very good amount of health on me. There. Up there. Get from the bounce all the way up there, and go through the door. And I'm also gonna get my towel back out, because we still had one zombie jock in here that we need to deal with. There we go. I could have used the Dewey Tron on him, but the Dewey Tron actually doesn't do any damage to him. The, the jocks in here are only damaged by the towel, which I guess makes sense, you know, they're, they're trying to incorporate the stereotypes of high school life. Alright. Well, now that we got our good stuff, I'm gonna get the Dewey Tron back out. Where we are going to want to go is back up the stairs, and if you remember from a little bit earlier when I got a little bit confused, there was a set of boxes there that was a little too high for us to jump, but thanks to our new shoes, our very silent new shoes I must say, we can now get up to it. And we're gonna put our shoes back on. Unfortunately, he can't duck down, so the only way we're going to be able to hurt this guy is if he jumps, but I think we'll just use the towel instead because it does significantly more damage to him than the Dewey Tron does. Yeah, like, see, that almost took out half his health in one hit. There we go. One more hit should do it. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to stop inside one of the classrooms real quick. Inside the classrooms, there are some unique monsters. We got this dude right here who will throw his arm at you. But the most important thing you want to... Oh, God. You want to get in the classrooms is the apple. Apples are your healing items in the game. Uh, and I just straight up died, so that was a waste of my life. So, in that case, we're just going to leave the classroom. If you ever need health, always go into a classroom to grab an apple that is sitting at the desk at the very front of the classroom. It's a bit of a pain to get to, and it's not always going to be those green monsters in there, but if you can get to it, then more power to you. Alright, our next location is we need to go up these stairs. It's a little hard to do at times, because you do need to get it like a, a, an angle. Whack that guy in the eyeball because those little guys are hands down uh, the most annoying enemies next to bats because they are so small that you can't really do anything with them at this point. And they will constantly chase you down no matter what. Uh, okay. Go down here. And now we are down here by an elevator, but we don't have access to that right now because the elevator in this school is out, and this school has the most elaborate elevator system of any building I've ever been in my life. Welcome to the library! We are going to be very quiet in here, and so we're going to silently take these guys out. Uh, this introduces the eyeball monsters that do uh, range damage, they'll so start shooting, I don't know, what, it's supposed to be tears or something? Read. Silence. And whatnot. We got this weirdo back here, which honestly is actually one of my like favorite like enemy designs, just because it's just like this weirdo with like a stick figure with glasses. I guess it's supposed to be like referencing the fact that he's invisible. Take a Duitron and just squirt him in the face. Can't really get close to him. And up here we get ourselves the uh uh Dixon Stray. I, I don't know what it is, but it's something that has a lot lower of a firing arc than our Dewey Tron does. Which means that we can actually hit enemies that are a little bit lower to us, like those annoying little eyeballs. And you're gonna notice something with this game, is the fact that uh, in true Metroidvania fashion, every new item and weapon that we get is going to help us progress further and further into the game. And it also involves a lot of backtracking. Now, the location where we need to go next is actually pretty elaborate. I need to uh, go over my notes real quick. Okay. So, where we want to go is we want to go this way. Just strut through the hallways like a boss. Head up here. Not in here! 
God, no, do not go into that room if you are hearing the bell ring. There's a reason behind- no, no. Bats, go away. Uh, so many bats. Actually, Tau would probably be better for them. Or outrunning them might actually be better. Get those stairs. Good. Oh, God. I'm gonna get this out instead. Just gonna keep uh, shooting them with this. There's no way I'm gonna be able to close the distance with my towel with how fast he's shooting his head off at us. But pretty easy to take care of, so no problem whatsoever. Alright, so our next destination is to go down. No, down. There we go. Get this out real quick so we can deal with this jerk. Actually, no, what am I doing? I can just jump. Jump is always faster than just going down the stairs if you need to go down the flight stairs because, well, it instantly just drops you down there. Oh god. Okay, this one is not the room I wanted to go into. Although after what I'm gonna have to deal with, I might just need to get one of those apples, so I might be best to just save them. Okay, that's a classroom as well. I think it's one I think it might actually be labeled. Come on, come on. On guard. Okay, yeah, here we go. There we go, take care of him real quick. Get inside here. And it's all quiet. Ah, but not with this jerk. There we go. The class of 1991. It, 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 I see there's a lot of clones in this school. Maybe this is actually clone high. All right. Grab our tool. Get in here. Ah, oh, God. Now, this actually confused me a lot my first playthrough, uh, my first full playthrough this game. Uh, we're going to skip that for now. We're going to go into the principal's office. And the Grim Reaper shows up for some reason. So, we're gonna, just going to spray him. Stay away from his sight. And we just killed death. And also stole the scythe. Which honestly looks more like a gardening hoe than it does the Grim Reaper's scythe, to be honest. I guess he decided to downsize his equipment, but whatever. Head back in here, uh, and here's the most annoying sound in the entire game. If you're sick as sick of Grandma's doorbell as much as I am, then you want to take this baseball bat and smack this. Also get used to the sound of points going up. You're going to be hearing that a lot, especially for breaking that clock. But yeah, the game doesn't really tell you that, but it's the same song we heard in that hallway, and that's supposed to be the indicator of what we need to do to stop the bell going off in there. Now, the reason why I didn't want to go into that hallway first and foremost while the bell was still ringing was because of the fact that there is a zombie that roams the halls while the... Uh, Bell is raining. Uh, I guess it's supposed to be the hall monitor, and just like all hall monitors, he is absolutely mad with power, and will one hit kill you. So that's supposed to be like your warning that yeah, you don't want to go down this way, buddy. I put my spring shoes on. There we go. I'm probably also gonna go grab the other. Apples from the classrooms as well because I just want to make sure I am good on health for a bit, especially with this jerk prowling around right below me. Oh, that's right. This is actually one of the classrooms that doesn't have it. This one's a track classroom. So now we gotta deal with this jerk. Go wait, go wait. What about you? Are you... Do you have an apple inside you? I'm hoping so. I'm just gonna deal with this problem from a distance. Hey, 
There we go. All right. Uh, let's see. Apple. 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 Uh, oh God. The teacher doesn't want to part with this apple, so I must deal with him f first and foremost. I'm sorry. I need this more than you do. I know it's as green as your body and your head, but you know what? I I I, I need I need my fruit. I need to stay nice and healthy. Go in there. And just nearly get, uh, avoid getting some head. So, now that we have dealt with, uh, the Bell, as well as the Grim Reaper, it's time for us to actually head into the classroom that was, well, blaring that, uh, Grandma's doorbell. And thankfully, it is just a short walk from our location. Drop down here, head down here, and now it's nice and quiet. Unless you go into the classroom, in which case then you hear the song again. And the only reason I'm going to here is I need more apples. There we go. Yep, there we go. Usually, by the monster inside the classroom, it's a good indicator of what has apples and what doesn't. So, if it has, like, the little eyeball creatures, that's usually a trap classroom. But if it has, like, the green monsters inside it, then that is an indicator that it will have an apple inside it. So, that, that's a good frame of reference if you're going in and you need, like, a quick idea of what rooms are good and what ones aren't. So, just skulk through the quiet hallways, make our way down here... And go into another classroom. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a green monster, which usually means that there's probably an apple waiting for us at the very end. Surprised he hasn't shot his hand at us, but you know what? I'm all for it. No power fist for you, buddy. Just keep spraying him. Hose him down. Uh oh. Hose him down. There we go. Grab our apple, and let's get out of here. And we'll just keep making our way through the quiet hallways. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot you could uh, hide inside the lockers if you want to avoid enemies. I guess this would be a, a way to avoid the eyeball creature. I say it would be, if it wasn't for the fact that he will just constantly just harass you right outside of your locker. Anyways, got some sandwiches. Sandwiches are actually pretty good weapons. They do significant damage, as well as the fact that they throw into an arc so you can hit enemies low on the ground. Now it's time for a food fight, so we're just gonna chuck some sandwiches at this jerk. And we're done. Now you would think that the sandwich throwing zombie would be the boss of this area, but you would be wrong. Instead, we got a little chef eyeball creature, and we got a big chef eyeball creature, and the big guy needs to die by, uh, food. Yeah, you'd think that the sandwiches would be more of, like, a healing item, but no, it's actually just a really good projectile weapon. As you can see, my hatred for these little guys knows no end. And my death knows no end either. Game over. Thankfully, though... All of our progress, uh, up to this point, is automatically saved. So, if you are ever fearing of dying, the worst you have to deal with is having to go back and just backtrack all the way back to the rooms. But, for now, that's where we're going to end this first uh, video of Ghoul School Off. Uh, thank you all for watching, and next time, we'll head back to the lunchroom. I'll actually probably just meet you right in outside the lunchroom. And we'll continue our way through the school in hopes of fixing this mess once and for all. See you then.